Welcome. Uh, we have made it to the end of the liquid chromatography lectures. And the last part that we, are do, that we are going to have a look here is helic chromatography or hydrophilic interaction chromatography. And helic chromatography has been um, coming about, let's say, during the last 10 to 15 years. And it is very much being developed to resolve real problems. Uh, because in spite of the fact that um, we had before already reverse phase chromatography and normal phase chromatography, some of the compounds could not be really very well separated in spite of this. Into this category belong very polar organic compounds, which are not really separatable with ionic chromatography, but also neither a reverse phase nor normal phase are suitable. So this means that uh, compounds which in normal phase chromatography are so strongly bound with the stationary phase that they can't be eluted uh, and therefore they are just um, retained and can't be separated. On the other hand, in reverse phase chromatography, uh, they are almost not retained, if retained at all, and uh, their chromatography is really a pain. Very often they can't be uh, separated nicely with reverse phase chromatography. So as a result, if there's such compounds are there, if they are, are ionic, inorganic ions especially, then ion chromatography could be also tested or ion pH chromatography, both of them could work. Uh, but a lot of them are not ionic or ionic chromatography is not really very mm, advantageous because ionic chromatography requires also a bit specific equipment. So it is a bit more mm, complicated than just reverse phase chromatography. So the, the, the idea was maybe it is possible to do kind of like reverse phase chromatography, but to have a polar uh, stationary phase. So to use a combination of the mobile phase and stationary phase, uh, one from normal phase chromatography and one from the uh, reverse phase chromatography. So how does this look like? In case of uh, helichromatography, the stationary phase is like it is in normal phase chromatography, but uh, used in the mobile phase water. So primarily the stationary phase will be covered by a water layer. So water is very close to the stationary phase. There is an immobilized water layer on the stationary phase. And our mobile phase is the same kind of mobile phase as is used in reverse phase chromatography. So a mixture of organic modifier and water. But now what starts happening is that the stationary phase is very polar. So very polar molecules can interact with the stationary phase. But because the mobile phase is also polar, but slightly less polar, uh, the well, the compound really can portion between this mobile phase and uh, stationary phase. And the uh, retention is here brought about due to the interactions of the analyte with the stationary phase, which are polar type of interactions. So um, hydrogen bonding as well as dipole-dipole interactions. While the elution is caused by the mobile phase interacting with the stationary phase. So mobile phase also contains water molecules. And these water molecules constantly also want to um, interact with this immobilized water. So they are coming and pushing the analyte molecules away from this immobilized water uh, layer. So this means that analyte and mobile phase compete for the possibility to be here on the stationary phase. So uh, retention is called by analyte interaction with stationary phase, but dilution by the analyte and uh, mobile phase's interaction with the stationary phase. The fact that water here causes a compound to elute, it means that we do not want to use too much water here as well. 
And actually, we very often in Hillic nowadays also use gradient dilution, uh, but the gradients are exactly opposite to what we had in reverse phase chromatography, because here water is the mobile phase component that has a strong diluting power. In reverse phase chromatography, the organic modifier was the um, component that was causing stronger dilution, so it was uh, said to have a stronger diluting power. Here, however, water is this component. And if we do gradient dilution, then we increase water percentage in our uh, mobile phase. So the stationary phase here was like in normal phase chromatography, while the mobile phase was like in reverse phase chromatography. So a mixture of organic modifier and water, and not just pure water, but it's usually buffered. In, in From the experiment, experience's point of view, it can be said that uh, having some ammonium ions in the buffer in the buffer is very important. So just acidic additives usually are not very good, and very very often having compound uh, having lower pHs uh, can be beneficial. So uh, buffers containing ammonium ions and uh, pHs around three to five could be. Uh, something that are good, especially when you couple it also with mass spectrometry, then they are also enhancing detection. Uh, the mechanism is a partitioning between a polar phase and polar liquid uh, that is immobilized on the stationary phase and another slightly less polar uh, phase, which is then the mobile phase. And uh, analytes are interacting with the stationary phase, and the illusion is caused by the competition between the analyte and the mobile phase molecules. And here we see a kind of opposite uh, illusion order compared to reverse phase chromatography. In reverse phase chromatography, the compounds which were more polar were able to interact with the mobile phase stronger, and therefore could pass the column faster. Here, however, polar compounds are interacting, interacting more stronger with the stationary phase and therefore are retaining stronger. So um, when we compare the elution order of the, of the mobile phase uh, of the compounds in the helix and in reversed phase, then it's opposite. Uh, in reversed phase, the Polar compounds elute early, while in helic chromatography they elute later. And similarly to reverse phase, also here, acid base properties of the compounds are therefore very important because the uh, deprotonated anions uh, of acids or protonated uh, forms of bases are uh, having stronger retention than the corresponding neutral compounds. So this also has to be taken into account. So as a summary, helic chromatography is come kind of a compromise between reverse phase chromatography and normal phase chromatography. And um, most probably helic is the second most used chromatography type in HVLC after reverse phase chromatography. It is a bit more, mm, it is a bit less robust than uh, reverse phase chromatographies, which means that um, we turn to helic really when we have very, very polar compounds that can't be retained really with the reverse phase chromatography. Uh, but for these compounds, it does work, uh, though the method development is more of an art than it is for reverse phase chromatography, where there are uh, kind of simpler rules that can be applied to choose the mobile phases, choose the chromatography conditions, choose the columns. In helix, it's a bit more, uh, more of an art, uh, but probably this will also change over the next five to 10 years because helix columns are still in development. Um, there aren't such good um, out-of-the-box solutions like in the reverse phase chromatography where C18 columns, 15 centimeters, um, three micrometer particle sizes are kind of standard uh, things that we work for a really large majority of the uh, tasks. 
So this was about HPLC. Thank you. Um, and I suggest you to go through these um, three chromatography types and have a look at what were the polarities of the analytes that can be determined with each one of them, the polarities of the stationary phase and mobile phase, and also uh, please look through how is the pH affecting the retention of the molecules in the reverse phase chromatography, and also think through which compounds are eluting earlier, which compounds are eluting later. Good luck.